most intriguing things about the uh, phototransduction is that it, it sits in a place where it essentially either an increase or a decrease in the number of photons can be can be signaled. So if if we if we just ha were down at um, at zero and we could only uh, signal a, a change in one direction, so what happens in the in the photoreceptors is that there's what's called a dark current. And that dark current enables one to s signal either light, which in turn, which in fact causes a hyperpolarization, or more darkness, which causes a depolarization. So let's see how that works. At rest, there is a high uh, concentration in the photoreceptor of cyclic GMP. And these, there are a specific type of channel in, these are uh, metabotropic channels in the uh, photoreceptors. These are cyclic GMP activated cation channels. Uh, and these are non-selective cation channels. They pass both, they pass sodium and, and potassium, but they also pass calcium. So they are gonna depolarize the cell. And at rest, in the darkness, there's a bunch of them in our, that are open. Remember, this is a probabilistic curve. Well, the, 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 uh, the probability of these uh, channels being open is, is very high, as long as the concentration of cyclic GMP is high. Then what happens when there's light? What happens when there's light is that light uh, activates this uh, metabotropic receptor, which is called rhodopsin. There is a chromophore in here, which is the retinol. And, and the activation of rhodopsin uh, activates a phosphodiesterase, which then uh, uh, metabolizes the, the cyclic GMP. And now there is low cyclic GMP inside the cell. And so these channels are going to close. So if you have a nonspecific cation channel, let's, let's go over to the board just to make sure that we understand this. Let's say this is zero potential. And a normal, a typical neuron is going to sit at, say, negative 65 millivolts. But these cells, these photoreceptors, have this resting dark current, this resting non-selective cation channel that's open in the dark. So here we are in the dark, and the potential is not negative 65. It's closer to, say, negative 40 or so. And so here we are in the dark. And now there is a flash of light. And the response to that flash of light is that the cat nonspecific cation channels are going to close. And so it looks, it's a hyperpolarizing response, and it looks something like that. Okay, so how does this, how does this phototransduction work, and how does it work so reliably? How is it amplified? Well, one photon, this is not true of cones, but for rods, rods have the ability to absorb, on average, one photon. So the average response, will there be a response of, uh, um, to one photon? On average, rods will respond to one photon. That is not true of cones. It takes several photons for an average uh, cone to respond. But for rods, one photon can excite the rod rhodopsin. And that has the effect of activating hundreds of these G proteins that can activate hundreds of these phosphodiesterase molecules and then in turn lead to hundreds, many hundreds of these uh, cation channels closing. So there's an amplification from just one photon. So the response is big. What else is the response? If it, this is all metabotropic. So it's slow. It's slow. Fission is kind of slow. The, we're, we're not on a movie set. We're out here in, in um, the natural world, and things don't uh, change on a nanosecond level. What you see at one, on one second is likely to be what you're going to see in the next second. So uh, the, the visual system is, uh, is pretty slow. 
All right, let's just take a look at the um, at at the um, molecules involved in actually absorbing the photon. It is a it's a vitamin A, which um, is absorbed from blood, is turned into this 11 cis retinol, which is necessary to absorb um, light. This absorbs light in both the rod and the cone. The difference between the rod and the cone is the opsin that is associated with this chromophore, with this photopigment. So this is going, this is going to change the absorption characteristics that this 11 cis is exposed to. Um, but the process is the same. Light comes in, it goes to an all trans, and it goes around this visual cycle. The upshot of this is that there are incredibly large number of molecules that are necessary for this to work. Any one of these molecules doesn't work, the vision may be good today, may be good tomorrow, but eventually it will, it will not uh, be okay. And this is the reason why there are so many, um, this is one reason why there are so many different ways to get to one of the most common diseases called retinitis pigmentosa. In retinitis pigmentosa, Diseases in one of these enzymes or transporters or, or, um, can lead to a, uh, just a, a, a destruction of the, of the retinal machinery. And it starts with a, a uh, problem in the photoreceptors. Okay? And this is a, a devastating uh, loss of vision. Another uh, potential way to lose vision, um, but completely avoidable, is to not have enough vitamin A in the system. So being without vitamin A uh, leads to what's called, initially leads to rod dysfunction. And so that results in what's called night blindness. So you can't see at night when the rods are responsible for, for vision. Um, but eventually it will lead to complete blindness if not, if not uh, um, fixed. So vitamin A, when I, when I wrote my first, the first edition of my textbook, I thought, oh, well, we don't have to worry about that anymore because everyone knows it, and so everyone gets enough vitamin A. The fact is that in develop, many developing countries, people are not getting enough vitamin A, uh, and I would just editorialize, take the uh, privilege of editorializing for a moment that providing vitamin A to children um, is pennies. It, it, for a year, you, it, it costs almost nothing. Um, and not doing it, as we'll see in the end, if a child doesn't see during their childhood, they will never be able to recover vision, correct or high acuity vision as adults. So this is not, this is not a trivial thing. Ha lacking vitamin A during childhood is not something that you can make up for during adulthood. It will cause adulthood blindness or adulthood very poor vision. Um, it is not only the lack of vitamin A or vitamin A deficiency are not is not only a problem in uh, developing countries. It is an increasing problem in the United States, just simply due to poor nutrition. So, what I thought should have been um, a scourge that was eradicated a long time ago is unfortunately uh, rearing its its ugly head in several parts of the world, um, but entirely correctable for for incredibly cheap amount of money. So now we're gonna go on and we're gonna talk about the differences between rods and cones.